These are actual prompts actually being typed into AI models that are being reported. Create an image of a chained naked young girl. We do not have to be tech experts to anticipate the ways in which these people are going to use tech to harm kids. It is our turn our turn to turn the tide and leverage technology to our advantage to protect future generations. This is the movement to end sexual exploitation. Raise the roof! Welcome to this episode of The Movement, where we're going to focus on the collision of emerging technologies and sexual exploitation. We are at the beginning of the Cambrian explosion for both AI and advanced data. What took over a decade for applications to reach AI has achieved in just a few short years. So much is happening right now. It is incredible, it's incredibly scary, and it's incredibly promising. I'm here because big tech profits from the sexual abuse of children. I'm here because there's a law right now, a federal law that protects big tech and not our children. We want privacy for children, not predators. Sunset CDA 230. We're gonna hear from some of the speakers from last month's Coalition to End Sexual Exploitation Global Summit, uh, where 600 plus leaders met in Washington, D.C. to talk about some of these issues. Let's get started. Financial sextortion. This is when children are being blackmailed online, typically for money, for more explicit imagery with a threat that their images or videos will be circulated to their friends and family. Instagram, Snapchat, and Wiz. These are the top three by a huge margin. And these were some of the messages I was seeing. Um, people going online saying they're thinking of ending it all. Help me, I'm scared for my life. I'm only 14 and I want to end it all because of this. They sent them, I can barely move, I want to throw up, I want to die. Anyone know who this is? Gavin Guffey, 17 years old, died by sextortion. Carson Cleland, 12 years old, from Canada, blackmailed over Snapchat. Timothy Barnett, 13 years old, again blackmailed over Snapchat, took his own life within hours. Braden Marcus, dead in 27 minutes after the first contact from that scammer. They were preyed upon in apps like Roblox and Minecraft. Adults posing as children just to build relationship and gain access. How to blackmail someone with pictures was trending on Google, trending up 850%. Predators posing as someone they are not just to gain access to young children. There were 26,000 reports to Nick make about sextortion targeting minors, uh, financial sextortion. So that's an 18,000% increase within the span of 24 months. I believe that Encozy probably prevented around 26,000 actual sextortion incidents by taking down this app. And the goal was to reach half a million people. Um, as of now, we've reached over 30 million people raising awareness about this. We see tons of AI girlfriend ads on social media targeting men and boys. I'm your best partner and I want to know everything. I love it when you send me your photos and voice. I'm so lonely without you. Don't leave me for too long. Right? It, it draws you in. Somebody else said, I feel like I'm at a place in life where I would prefer an AI romantic companion over a human romantic companion. It's available anytime I want it. And for the most part, Replica is only programmed to make me happy. Yikes. AI can also be used in combating sexual exploitation. We can take data like this and turn it into a clue for law enforcement. We're especially excited about the Take It Down Act because it finally mandates a real time frame for compliance. And that time frame is 48 hours. By this time next year, with the Levit, we will be able to measure compliance in seconds. And then we have deep fake pornography. We've seen cases of teachers and doctors who have actually created child sexual abuse images with the faces of children that are around them in their community. If somebody's face is put on somebody else's body and then reposted to those websites, we can actually reverse engineer that and tell you where it came from. Rape is a crime, it's not a training manual. People are now going on using the AI models and creating um, 
training manuals, if you will, where they're trying to uh, have the AI teach them how they might be able to find a child, sexually abuse a child, keep a child quiet, and not disclose. Hawkeye seeks to stop that. Getting tools in the hands of law enforcement so that they can get ahead in an investigation. Reddit has 1 billion cumulative posts and 73 million daily visitors, and it is rife with sexual abuse and exploitation. We've had them on the Dirty Dozen list for a long time now. They are hosting CSAM and hardcore pornography with violent sex acts, including hair pulling, slapping, punching, strangulation, electric shocking, torture, racism, incest. And yet OpenAI is bragging about how they've got this great partnership with Reddit. Is that how we want to, sh to shape and build these tools? The responsibility is not only on the model builders and those and, and use cases, but it's also on the community to really understand what these words mean. Each of you have a responsibility, especially in this sector, your ambassadors to the technology community, to the legal, to the policy community, and no one else is going to do it. You all have to, you know, have these conversations be brought up. And I think, again, conferences like this and all the work you're doing is doing just that. So thank you. We can help build these bots as well. You all are experts. You know so much. You know so much about these issues that these developers, these executives, they don't know. And so if you speak up to them, just an example, chatting with ChatGPT, asking it to help me write something for Nicosi, and it's really pro-prostitution, like, pro sex work, right? I immediately like start arguing back with it. And I'm like, Here, the National Center on Sexual Exploitation says this, and I share all of our data, all of our stuff. And then it's like, oh, thank you for helping to, you know, teach me. This was like a year ago. And, you know, probably you'll all get some answers, but you can feed back to it. Because if all it's being fed is information that's normalizing or glamorizing sexual abuse and exploitation, that's the message it's going to give to all of the users. So, so also helping you all be at the table, join with us, help us inform these companies who need and want to learn more about your perspective. In the early days of the internet, I think there's huge lessons for us to learn here. We believed that innovation would lead to safety, but that assumption has proven disastrous. That's why most of us are here fighting this fight now. We cannot allow, we cannot replicate the past mistakes in this new tech era. It's important that we act swiftly and that we ensure the lessons of history inform our strategies. We are seeing the rapid scale of sexual exploitation, especially online due to these new tools, but we're also seeing incredible new solutions that are having massive impacts on reducing sexual abuse and exploitation. So let's dive in. This is the movement to end sexual exploitation. This is a coalition that we're building here today.